Israel has successfully launched the very first privately funded spacecraft in history to the moon, a joint venture between nonprofit company Space IL and the Israel Aerospace Industries. Bereshit, or Genesis, in English, will land on the lunar surface and, if successful, will make Israel the fourth ever country in the world to land on the moon, following the U.S., Russia, and China. Here with us to discuss everything that went into this incredible mission is Asaf Levine, head of software at Space IL. Hi, welcome. Hello. So, the world witnessed the launch of Bereshit into space. It was incredibly exciting. And I'm curious, what was your reaction to this? Well, for me, it was really a dream come true. I mean, me as a child, when I was five years old, I remember sitting in the classroom. I was in the States at that time. Sitting in the classroom and, and looking and watching astronauts walk on the moon. So, it was really a dream. I wanted to become an astronaut. I wanted to build spacecrafts. And... For many years, it was just a child's dream. And then I got this phone call five years ago from, from my actually Air Force commander who told me about this project. I think the same week I already uh, interviewed and I started working at Space AL. Wow. And now here we are five years later. Um, we've been following the expected launch mm -hmm. for some time now, but this is, as you said, it's a project years in the making. Can you tell us a little bit about what was involved in sending Bereshit to the moon? Yeah, actually everything started from, from a competition. It was called the Google Lunar X Prize, which is a part of a nonprofit organization, X Prize. They, they create competitions for the benefit of mankind. Mm -hmm. And this specific com competition that started about 10 years ago, I think, was about a private company who would send a, a unmanned spacecraft to the moon, perform a soft landing without any government funding or actually up to 10% government funding to prove that it, it's possible for a private company to successfully land on a moon. Actually, that would be the first ever time for an interplanetary private mission. So that's how it all started. And, and then Yariv Bash, Kfir Damari, and Jonathan Weintraub, the three founders, they fell in love with the concept, and they for uh, it happened on uh, December 2010. They started uh, trying to to spread the word, tried mm -hmm. to find find initially volunteers, and of course the necessary funds. So it took several years until they got the necessary funding, and eventually the company, uh, the organization, uh, started. And how many people ha are behind this endeavor? So. As I said, initially it was mostly volunteers because it, they had no money. Uh, then gradually they started taking part-time engineers. And eventually by 2015, we grew up to around 30 people, 30, maybe 40 people, mm -hmm. uh, which are professional engineers. We pro pro uh, re uh, hired professional CEO and eventually uh, signed a contract with industry, the Israel air industry, aerospace industry, to be a, our main subcontractor. Mm -hmm. So... It's about 40, 50 people on, in our organization, another 50 people from IAI, Israeli Aerospace Industry, and several subcontractors. Mm -hmm. And I think our viewers would be curious to know how long it took to actually build this spacecraft, to build Bereshit. So the, the, entire, the entire organization exists for about eight, nine years, but the actual engineering uh, happened only in the last five years. Mm -hmm. So it's four or five years that we actually start building and, and got ready to launch, which is basically a record, a world record. I don't mm -hmm. think there's ever been a spacecraft of this size that has been developed in such a short period. It's an incredible achievement. And what can we expect now uh, from Bereshit until it lands on the moon? So uh, Bereshit is now flying in space and it's flying in an elliptic, elliptical orbit uh, which we gradually increase. It, we started with an orbit that reaches 60,000 kilometers, which is about 30,000 miles, and we are gradually increasing it to up to the range of the moon by several maneuvers. So we're, we're, the, the spacecraft uh, or orbits around Earth at this time, and uh, once every few days we perform a maneuver that increases the altitude and we reach closer and closer to the moon. So during that period, we communicate with the spacecraft, we make sure that everything is healthy, and we also uh, uh, take pictures and videos which we will expose. Mm -hmm. And has there been any trouble up in space, has, or has it been smooth sailing so far? I think it was. if it was that easy, everybody would do it. So <laughs> uh, there has been some surprises. Um, we found uh, that our star trackers, which we were supposed to provide us continuous, uh, continuous sensing of the stars, 
they get blinded by the sun once in a while in some unexpected angle. So mm -hmm. that was a challenge that we had to overcome. And we actually overcame that challenge by either redirecting, pointing the spacecraft uh, slightly aside so it won't be blinded by the sun, or, or planning our maneuvers mm -hmm. in such a way that they won't get blinded. And we've also encountered so several other things, such as um, more occasional restarts of the central computer, more than we expected. We did expect that our software is capable of handling that in almost any stage of the mission, mm -hmm. uh, but it happens more frequently than we expected. So we are studying these things and we are checking the implications and overcoming each one of these, but everything's good. And before we were speaking, you likened the shuttle to, to a baby, essentially. Yeah, it's actually like a baby. We are like first time parents. <laughs> our baby is born and we're now waking up at night, which practically what we are doing. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the mission operations center almost every night. And we, the baby cries, we talk to it, and mm -hmm. we learn how to be, become parents. So we are basically parenting our child. Mm -hmm. And this is an incredible, I mean, this opens an incredible chapter in Israel space exploration. What can we hope to see in the future? Will Space IL and Israel participate in more space missions? So first of all, when, when this program began, it was just a competition. And when I talked to people in the street, I asked them, have you ever heard about Space IL? Nobody heard about it. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what happened in the last 10 years. Uh, everybody knows what Space IL is. The, the coverage, the world coverage is amazing because it, the world understood that this is really the first interplanetary private mission, which is a part a, of a, a trend or actually a goal of privatizing space, which mm -hmm. is now known as the new space. Because until now, space was always in, um, uh, managed uh, by governments, by big corporate mm -hmm. space organizations such as NASA and the European Space Agency. And nowadays, we see companies like SpaceX by Elon Musk, mm -hmm. or we see uh, uh, Jeff Bezos with his company. Uh, private companies are now uh, starting to become to provide services in space which with a goal of space tourism. So we are a part of this trend. We are a part of, ma of making space something which is is something in, in the reach of anybody. Mm -hmm. And what Mois Khan and the Edelsel family and our donors have proved is that that people, everybody can can dream and actually fulfill uh, the goal of reaching space. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, Saf Levine, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with thank us you. today.